what are you going to do with a degree from Johnson C. Smith University? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar and the title of this video is What are you going to do with a degree from Johnson C. Smith University? So the title is a bit of a riddle uh, but as you'll see it's a, uh, it's a true story and uh, there is a significance behind it. Before I jump in, I just want to say that I think this video, by nature of it, is going to draw in some people who are uh, new to my channel. So if you're new to my channel, please click the like button, please share the video, and please subscribe to my channel. Especially if you are in the Johnson C. Smith University community. So, let's see, so the first principle of my uh, blog and my channel is creating ecosystems of success and a key focus is uh, education. And up to this point, if you've been watching my channel, I've been uh, mostly repping the University of Michigan. And I went to the University of Michigan for graduate school, did my PhD there, and it's football season, so I've uh, done a lot of videos on the football team, and I've, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers just off of Michigan football. So if there are any Michigan football fans watching this, thank you for subscribing to my channel. Um, but I think the time has come to invite in some Golden Bulls, some Johnson C. Smith University Golden Bulls. So before I get into uh, this video and what it's about, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Hip Hip Hooray. So down at Johnson C. Smith University, uh, it's homecoming weekend. I didn't get to go this year because we, we took a family trip out to Vegas about two weeks ago and I'm going somewhere else next weekend, which I'll probably make a video about, but the numbers didn't add up, so I'm here in the DMV while everyone's down at homecoming. But at last year's homecoming, I was walking around the yard. And for those of, those of you who don't know, that's what um, how most HBCU campuses are referred to. Uh, they're referred to as the yard. So last year, I was walking around the yard during uh, homecoming, and I saw this booth uh, by this company, Hip Hip Hooray. And I saw that they were making um, signs. Um, uh, and different artifacts for the university and they were sitting there and they were painting them and they were painting uh, you know uh, they were customizing them and, and painting on them for your class and so if you've been watching my videos you'll see that uh, next to the University of Michigan Block M there are four letters on the wall JCSU and that's for John C. Smith University um, my alma mater and that's where I got my bachelor's degree. So when I was at homecoming last year, I was just thinking, okay, well, I was already planning on setting up my YouTube channel, and I wanted to think of things that would make my channel unique. And I thought that it would be cool to rep both my schools. And so I, I purchased those letters on the wall there, or that sign from Hip Hip Hooray. So I wanted to acknowledge them. And uh, they do, it looks like they do, they make artifacts like that, but they also do uh, painting events. Those are pretty popular. And and they create all kinds of artifacts for you. 
and it looks like they're based out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. So I just wanted to shout them out before I got into this, and uh, shout out to Hip Hip Hooray. So, again, up until now, when uh, discussing um, you know, my education post high school, I've discussed the University of Michigan. Um, but going forward, I, I want to start to weave in stories and content about uh, Johnson C. Smith University and, and what it was like from my vantage point to attend an HBCU. I think there are a lot of cool stories there and a lot of unique perspectives there and a lot, just a lot of value um, added there and there's a lot of value that can be created there by talking about my experiences at JCSU and at some point maybe I can even invite on some other Smith alums onto the channel. Um, so going forward, I wanna I wanna talk about Smith a little bit and what it did for me and, and how it got me to where I am. But I'm gonna start this, uh, however videos I make about John C. Smith and my experiences there. Uh, there's been a story rolling around in my mind, and I think I'm gonna start this all with this story. And it comes from. It's based upon a question from my auntie, my dear auntie Adele. And it's a question that she asked me right around uh, the time of my graduation slash commencement at Johnson C. Smith University in 1999. I think, I think graduation was actually at, uh, geez, I can't think of the building. It wasn't on campus, it was right there um, on, it was at some building it might have been Freedom Arena. It was on Freedom Freedom Boulevard, Freedom Drive. One of those. But it wasn't um, on campus. Anyway. So my Auntie Adele asked me. She said, honey. And she has this, this little, when she's in a good mood, she has this, well, honey, what are you going to do with a degree from Johnson C. Smith University? And I'm going to unpack that in a second. But... I'll just say that um, my auntie Adele has contributed a lot to my life. I would go down to, I would go down and visit her and my cousins in Georgia uh, during spring breaks at JCSU, and I'll just say that my auntie Adele has taught me a lot about what not to do when going to visit relatives. So, when you go to visit relatives, you should always take enough money, and never assume that your relatives are going to feed you when you get there try to be mindful of their resources in their homes when you go to visit those relatives and also if you can get a vehicle when you go uh, especially if your relatives live in someplace like suburban Georgia that would be good to get a vehicle and just overall not to burden your relatives when you go visit them so I can thank I want to thank my auntie Adele for teaching me all those lessons Okay, so let's go back. So all the Smithites watching this, before you burn the house down, uh, let, let's unpack what my Auntie Adele was trying to say. So basically, JCSU, Johnson C. Smith University, it's a smaller HBCU in the southeast uh, in Charlotte, which is now a growing city and it's grown a lot since I've been there and it looks completely different in certain ways. But what Auntie Adele was trying to say was who would know of Johnson C. Smith University outside of Charlotte, North Carolina? Who would know about it outside of CIAA country? That's the athletic conference that Johnson C. Smith University played in, the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association. I was able to say that without stuttering. So who would know about JCSU outside of the CIAA country? Who would know about JCSU outside of the Southeast? So if you go beyond North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, who would know about JCSU? So in other words, Anwar, you know, you're getting a degree from this school. You know, what, 
what are your career prospects going to be? And, you know, at the time I wondered, okay, why are you just asking me this now? Why don't you ask me this? Why haven't you asked me this before? I'm about to graduate and get my diploma and walk across stage. But it was cool because it's something that I had thought about already. So fortunately, when I got to Johnson C. Smith University, I busted my tail and I got mostly A's in my major courses. So I really got there and I, I buckled down and I focused on my schoolwork. Um, potentially at the expense of some social activities like the Greek life, which I'll, I'll talk about later. But I really buckled down, and did my schoolwork, and uh, I believe when I graduated, I graduated magna cum laude, so I had a, a 3.6. And there were one or two semesters where, where I had a 4.0s. Uh, but I did what I needed to do in the classroom. So I, I positioned myself that way. And then um, there was really, really good and significant mentoring by the faculty in my department. And so they recognized my potential. And one of them recommended that I get involved in the McNair program and I'm going to talk about that in a later video so I got to do some um, research uh, in a, a biological research lab two summers and by that point I had thought about going to graduate school I'm talking about in my senior year and I applied to a couple of graduate schools and the University of Michigan is one of the schools that I got into and I had thought for for a little while, okay, you know, maybe I do want a bigger name university on my transcript whenever I finish my schooling and I go out into the working world. So I'd already thought about that, but things lined up where I got, I applied and I got admitted to the University of Michigan's Department of Pharmacology. So that's where she was going with that question and it was actually a very very good question so i'm going to use that question to set up some conclusions slash points for this video because there are a couple of points that i want to make um based upon my auntie adele's question and based upon my journey and my experiences so here goes i'm going to wrap the video up with this so while my first principle is creating ecosystems of success, one of my other principles is long-term thought. So in this context, no matter which school you choose, it could be Johnson C. Smith University, it could be Harvard, it could be Yale, it could be Stanford, it could be Buff State, it could be Russell Sage or RPI, any of those. You want to think long-term. And you want to have a, a plan. How are you going to pay for your education? Um, what career are you choosing? And will the economy have a job waiting for you for that career once your schooling is finished? What are going to be the next steps in your education? Will you be able to stop after getting your bachelor's degree? <clears throat> Excuse me. I threw a guy a little scratchy there. Will you be able to stop and be able to make a uh, earn a decent living with just your bachelor's degree? When I was there and when I graduated in '99, I remember having classmates who majored in computer science and computer engineering, and those individuals were able to go right out into the workforce and get jobs right away and start their lives and start careers and they were able to start buying houses and having families and those kinds of things. I was a biology major and no matter which school you go to, whether it's a small private school, a large state school, or a large private school, there's just not a lot that you can do with a biology degree on its own. So I already knew that. 
there were certain folks uh, in my cohort who went off to medical school. Um, you know, one girl was talking about going to dental school. I don't know if she actually went. And then uh, other folks went to pharmacy school. And then other folks went off into research like I did and ended up in completely different places. But I knew that with just my uh, biology degree, I wasn't going to be able to do anything with just that. So I'll probably have to continue my education and go to another school and do something else, which is what I did. But you want to, no matter what school you go to, you want to think about what the next steps are. You want to plan things out. So if you're a student who's seeing this and you're just going into college, these are things you want to think about, especially today where the price tag has gotten so much more significant. If you're already in college, you want to think about this. What are your next steps? What's your career going to be? Is there going to be a job waiting for you on the other end? And if you're a parent or an aunt or an uncle or a grandmother or a grandfather, or an older brother, a cousin or a mentor, and you know someone in your circle who's thinking about starting a journey like this, um, higher education, pursuing a white collar career, these are things that you want to say to them. Okay, regardless of what school you go to as an undergraduate, you want to think about the next steps and plan accordingly for the next steps. Five, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the road. So I just planted some pieces here and um, I'm going to re revisit these in the future when I make more videos about what it was like going to JCSU and what, what it did for me uh, going forward. But I'm going to leave three pieces that I, I've written in the description box below. One is going to uh, discuss something that one of uh, our biology professors really hammered into us, which is, you know, have you researched your career, in this instance being a medical doctor. A lot of my classmates when I was there wanted to be medical doctors, but they didn't really understand all that it took to get into medical school and to succeed. So this professor hammered us about that all the time, and I wrote a blog post about it. I also wrote a blog post about what John C. Smith University uh, did for me to help me uh, solidify and achieve and work in my STEM career. So this is talking about what I learned before getting to the University of Michigan. So that's going to be in the description box below. I'm also going to leave uh, a really popular piece I wrote about social class in the black community. And at some point I'm going to make a video or maybe a series of videos about what I didn't understand about Greek life and social class as a black person, what that would mean going forward. So I'm going to leave that in the description box below as well. If you have any comments based upon what I've said in this video, uh, please feel free to uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. The song you heard at the opening of this video, that's, what, that's our, our, our uh, alma mater. That's our loyalty song. We sing that song at the university, and we sing it at the end of each of our uh, chapter meetings. I'm active in our D.C. alumni chapter. If you live in the D.C. area, please come check us out. And I'm actually the treasurer for our D.C. alumni chapter. I think that's it. If you're new to the channel, please like this video. Please share it. And please subscribe to my uh, Big Discussions channel. You know what? Before I leave... That school song, I, I, um, I bought a CD at one point with, with, uh, with some of our choir's music on it, and I couldn't find it, so I went to YouTube, and I got that song, that version of our loyalty song, off of Marcus Graham's YouTube channel. So I just wanted to uh, give some attribution, some attribution to Marcus and acknowledge him and say that's where I got the song from. So with that, I'm going to conclude. Again, please like the video. Please share it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please leave some comments below if you have some Smith stories yourself. And um, always remember that your attitude determines your altitude.
Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.